Welcome back to Morning Break. The Savannah food scene continues to grow and soon a popular food truck will be making its debut as a brick and mortar operation. So here to tell us more about that and what's happening in our food scene. Eat it and like it's Jesse Blanco. Thanks for being here today. Uh, we're I hope you enjoyed your July 4th and had some good I did. on that. We went we went down to uh, to our place down near Destin, the 30A area of Florida and uh, stuck my head in the water and begged people not to ask me <laughs> to come out for a week. Just bring me another beer, and I just sat there. I spent a lot of time in the water, so. Well, now it's time to uh, to get out and about and then, uh, check out things. You've got something that's happening in, in, in your neck of the woods that, that, that you've had your eye on, and yeah. this is generating a lot of attention. Yeah, the, uh, the Strange Bird uh, restaurant is going into the Streamliner Diner. Everybody knows the Streamliner Diner. It's at the corner of uh, Barnard, and I think it's uh, Henry. Henry or Anderson, I always get them confused and I've only been in Savannah 20 years, but uh, it's going into the Streamliner Diner there and this story has exploded on our website, edenlagan.com, for two reasons. The, everybody loves the old nostalgic stuff and the Streamliner Diner has been there forever. People have plenty of memories about that, but the fact that um, Strange Bird is the food truck from Farm Bluffton and Common Thread, very, very popular street food, them going in there has just made this quadruple as as exciting for everybody um they do they do farm bluffton which was their first common thread is here those are both a little more elevated dining they have the wildflower cafe and the jepson which is you know museum eat sandwiches and salads and stuff but now they're doing grub they're doing burgers and and chicken sandwiches and barbecue and all of the things that we know this area loves and they do it well so i'm everybody's excited about that i've been watching them work on the space for uh for about a month five weeks maybe two months because i live in the area I didn't know what was going in there until Chef texted me a few days ago. Hey, we're going in. I go, that's you? Yep. <laughs> so then I got excited about it. And then I wrote a little two, three hundred words on the website and it went crazy. I mean, I thought it'd be OK, cool. But yeah, Savannah's excited about this one. Yeah, it, it seems like a, a kind of a marriage of something that <clears throat> food that people liked mm -hmm. going into a place that people love. Correct. And, and an opportunity to, to check it all Correct. out. Correct. And I can add that SCAD owns the building. SCAD owns the diner. So they pick and choose very carefully who they want to have tenants there. Sandfly Barbecue was there back in uh, 1920. They closed during the shutdown. There it is right there. If you've driven by, you know it very well. But SCAD is very meticulous about who they put in there. And they've applied for a liquor license. I don't know if it's full alcohol or just beer and wine, but they are looking to add, add alcohol to that. So it's going to be a crazy popular spot. I don't know exactly how many seats are in there, but I would guess 30, maybe. It's mm. tiny in there, so, but it's nostalgic. It's the old-timey diner. That place is going to be very popular. All right, to uh, another thing that's coming up, um, it's summertime, everybody's you know, got barbecues going on and things like that. You're having a barbecue party, or barbecue yes. dinner, I guess is a better word. Yes, way. yes, uh, uh, on August the 2nd, we are doing a, a pop-up barbecue at 208 Wine Bar. Uh, we announced it about six weeks ago, five, maybe about a month ago. Anyway, as of this red hot moment, we have two tickets left. So, <laughs> EatItAndLikeIt.com, get on there really quickly. They're going to be gone, one. I would think, by the end of the day, especially since we mentioned it here. But, yeah, two tickets left. It's uh, South of Heaven Barbecue, which you've heard me talk about mm -hmm. here a couple of times. He's coming to town to do a pop-up dinner for us. We're going to pair it with wine. And tickets, uh, $47, I believe. So, um, you get a plate of food. It's not all you can eat. Uh, and, and a wine, a glass of wine to go with it. And, yeah, the fact that there are two tickets left out of, I think, 80 will tell you it's been well received so far and it's going to be a good time on Wednesday, August the 2nd, I believe that is. And South of Heaven out of Brunswick, but they changed their name. The Tempest right? Barbecue, correct. So don't correct. be confused with that. Yes, um, yes. August 2nd for yes. that. You didn't like it.com if you want to jump on really quickly and get yes. the, the, one of those two tickets left. Um, and then we talked, we mentioned it off the top. We've got uh, TV shows. They all, all like to come here and, and feature our restaurants. We've had diners, drive-ins, and dives yeah. here recently, too. Yeah. And you got another one. Yeah, I was asked to uh, actually to participate in, a, in a, a show called Street Psalm. It's brand new. It hasn't aired yet. Uh, it's a, a, a wine connoisseur. He's not a sommelier. Traveling around the country, pairing good wine with street food. Huh. His name is uh, um, Jermaine Stone. That's him there. We were sitting out in the heat <laughs> doing <laughs> low country boil. We went to see Nick Mueller. We had some Chazitos burritos, and he paired it all with, uh, with wine. And uh, what I found most fascinating about this show, like I said, hasn't aired yet, is that they're going to six cities to start season one. New York, Miami, Houston, L.A., Chicago, big cities. Yeah. 
and Savannah. Gotta love that. That was awesome, and I was honored to, to have the opportunity to show them around. I had to audition for the gig, and I got it. Really? And so, yeah, that was really cool. We spent three days in 95 degree, you know, <laughs> and I'm kind of, sort of, kind of used to it. That crew coming in from L.A. and New York and all kinds of places, they were like, oh, my God, I didn't do this. But Any got, interesting pairings that they did that... You, that you uh, uh the surprised? burrito chaz chazito's burrito with uh with the wine was was really good all the wines were great we paired a uh, a, a wonderful white with the low country boil out at a home in uh in the berwick area so yeah it was it was really good that will air in november on the taste made network and then they told me shortly thereafter it'll be on amazon prime and Hulu, and it, we went to the Pirates' house and went in the dungeon. It, it was it was it was a lot of fun. A great, great, great group of people. I got to see how the big boys do it, with directors and producers and producers for the producers. It was super cool over three days. So I'm looking forward to that. It'd be a lot of fun to check out not only our food scene, but then also some pairings that maybe you can go try because these places are all over. That was the point, and they're not expensive wines. I think the most expensive wine that he paired was twenty eight dollars. I think. So yeah, it's not about you know spending all the money on wine. It's like, hey, I'm gonna have a burrito, but I don't want beer or alcohol liquor. I'm gonna have wine. So we'll see what it looks like. And there are some people that that is their only preference. Correct. All right, eatitandlikeit.com. You can go on there if there's still tickets left. Who knows? Somebody might have grabbed them. They might already. be gone already. <laughs> Jesse, thanks so much for being here today. All right, coming up an update.